Hi, my name is Dawn Neely. I am a counselor here at Alatoona High School, and I am going to go through and talk to you about our process for dual enrollment at Alatoona. Um, if you will, please make sure you sign in by either scanning the QR code or um, writing down the um, link so that we know who actually has been um, who actually attended because that helps us keep up with that information and not ask you to go back and redo it later on. Um, and that is case sensitive. So it's a capital AHS capital DE 2021. So we appreciate it if you would sign in once you watch this. Um, like I said, my name is Dawn Neely. I am the counselor for last names A through D and I also handle all of the dual enrollment for Chattahoochee Tech or two year colleges. Our counselor, Ms. Robin Rohrbach, handles all of the four-year schools. So schools like KSU or Georgia Highlands, Georgia Tech, Georgia State, those would be schools that she would be the one to provide information about. So one thing we wanna make sure is that you know your deadlines. Alatuna deadlines are earlier than the college's deadline. So we do that because we wanna make sure that all the documents are in, but we also have to ensure that we're meeting the needs of our whole school, not just the dual enrollment students. So um, it's time consuming to do all these meetings. And so we wanna make sure that we have time to address students that are not dual enrolled, as well as those that are. If you go to the Alatuna dual enrollment website for dates, we've got them listed there. You can access that by going to the Alatuna High School page, clicking on About. There's a drop down in that menu and says Counseling. Um, and you can also, if you've ever emailed me, it's in there, but you can also look at this link as well. So step one, where do I begin the process? If you're planning to dual enroll for this just the summer, some students only want to take a class in the summer, you just treat it like a summer school, then you need to email or submit your application and meet with me by the deadline. Usually that's sometime in February. I haven't seen a deadline out yet. Um, but if you check our page or the Chattahoochee or KSU page, those are what you're gonna see. I don't think KSU can start in the summer, so you could ask Ms. Rohrbach about that. Uh, I think you have to be in attendance. I don't think they just do a summer session. If you're gonna enroll, let's say summer and fall, and maybe even spring, then you have to submit an Alatuna intent form during registration in spring 2021. So during the spring, when we do registration, there is a form that you can fill out that says that you plan to dual enroll. If you did not fill that intent form out during the spring registration period, you will not be allowed to dual enroll the following year. We build our class schedule based on which classes you have requested. And so we have to make sure that you um, have requested that because by dropping classes, it affects class sizes, it affects teachers, and so it creates a bigger issue. So you've gotta make sure that you've actually um, submitted that intent form. So only students that did that can start classes this spring, which means you need to make sure you're thinking ahead. Step two is that you're gonna attend the virtual um, dual enrollment virtual information session. Obviously you're doing that now, um, and both student and parent need to attend that. And so we wanna make sure that um, you have gotten the information that you need in order to dual enroll because it's a lot of information. So we want both the parent and the student to be aware of that. Um, and, and we also want you to be aware that the student is gonna have a lot of responsibility for taking care of things. So if they are not someone that's going to do that, then I'm not sure that dual enrollment is the right place for them because they are gonna have a lot of the responsibility put on them. Step three, decide where you want to apply and determine if you meet criteria. You can do that by going to the Chattahoochee Tech website. You can go to the Kennesaw State website, Georgia State, Georgia Tech, Georgia Highlands, and also Georgia Futures. So what I would do is each of those are gonna have a dual enrollment page. You can look into that information and see what their process is, what the requirements are. You can also go to Georgia Futures and see what classes you're eligible to take. They have a dual enrollment page as well that has a lot of frequently asked questions on it. Um, in, the, in the other meeting that you watched that was just the general overview that everybody gets, you'll notice that you're only allowed 30 credit hours now. Used to be unlimited, now they've put a max on it. So we wanna be strategic and when we're planning your classes. So you wanna make sure you have an idea of what you wanna take, where you wanna go. All right. So step four is to complete the dual enrollment application for the specific college. Um, they are typically on their site or there's a link somewhere on their page. Um, you wanna make sure that the student is the one doing it. 
but you're also choosing dual enrollment as the application type. If you choose new student or anything like that, it's going to send it to a different department and you've not applied for dual enrollment. So you want to make sure you always choose the dual enrollment application. You should not be paying a fee for the dual enrollment application because they, those fees are waived for, just for high school students. And so if you get to a place where it's charging you a fee, it means you've probably filled out the wrong application, need to go back and correct that. Step five is to request your transcript using My Payments Plus. Obviously, the parent's going to have to help with this unless you give the student the, um, the login information. Not all colleges require a transcript, but some do. For instance, Chat Tech does not need a transcript, um, but KSU does, and a lot of the other schools will as well. So you need to look at the directions on the college's website to see what their requirements are and what you need to submit to them. Step six, you're going to submit qualifying test scores. Right now, due to COVID, um, you may not have scores, and they're going to waive that placement based for scores. And so it's the student's responsibility to make sure those scores are submitted in the format that the school wants them. For instance, KSU may need them directly from College Board or directly from ACT, so you'll need to log into those sites and send them directly. Whereas Chat Tech may allow you to send a screenshot of your PSAT scores or, a screen, or you're going to take the AccuPlacer with them. Now, right now, you don't need to do that, but you will eventually need to do that. All right, so September 7th, I'm sorry, step 7th, not September. My mind got distracted. You're going to email the dual enrollment counselor to schedule a virtual appointment. So if you've done everything, you've done your application, you've requested your transcript, you've submitted your test scores if you need to, then you're going to email either me or Ms. Rohrbach and say, I have completed my application. I need to schedule an appointment with you. So that's from the student. Okay. So then once you've done that, I or Ms. Rohrbach are going to send you an email with all of the paperwork that needs to be completed prior to our meeting. Okay. So we're going to have the meeting. The student and the parent are going to complete the paperwork prior to that. Um, and then we'll have a probably a virtual meeting to go over everything. Okay. Step nine, you're going to attend the individual virtual meeting with the Alatuna counselor. And again, both student and parent, so we're all on the same page. I will finish filling the paperwork out that you've sent me, or we both will, and then we'll email you a copy of it so you have it for your records. Step 10, you're going to join the correct Alatuna Remind, but please, please, please don't do it until after we've had our meeting. Um, there's a limit on the number of people we can have on a Remind at any given time, and um, none of the information that I'm sending out right now is going to apply to you anyway. It's really for those current students, so we want you to make sure you join the correct Remind, and that information is, we can give it to you during the virtual meeting, or you can find it, it may be on our Alatuna website as well. So steps 11 through 19, you're going to verify that all parts of your application have been submitted. You're going to check your email regularly. That's an important thing. You want to make sure that you're checking that chat tech email because they will assign you an email address and also your personal one because that's where your notifications are going to go as far as whether or not you've been admitted and things like that. You're going to register for advisement once you get the email directing you to register for advisement. Then you're going to register for classes once you once it's time for you to register, and you're going to only register for the classes that we discussed you taking. Okay, send any remaining documents to the college. That might be an immunization. It might be verification of lawful presence, which means you're a, means you're a U.S. citizen. Um, you need to email a PDF of your schedule to your Alatuna counselor once you have created your schedule. If you have college specific questions or issues, you're going to contact the college's dual enrollment office. I can't help you with being able to not accessing your email for them. I can't help you access your banner web or your Al um, Express, whatever they use. Like you have to reach out to the dual enrollment office or the help desk at those particular colleges to make sure they know and, and so they can help you. Okay, you're going to go to class. Um, you have to go to class. If it's an online class, you have to log into the class. If you're not going and you don't complete, they do a first day assignment or first week assignment. If you don't complete that assignment, they drop you from the class. And so we want to make sure that that doesn't happen 
So um, if you get dropped from the class, I don't have anywhere to put you except for usually an online class through Georgia Virtual School because it's usually after our 10 day period, which means our students here are 10 days into the curriculum and it's a lot. Sometimes it's more than that. Um, so you want to make sure that you're doing it. So if you have two classes, each class is going to have a first day assignment and that's for chat. I don't know what KSU does, but I'm assuming they do something similar. Um, to where you have to make sure you're doing your work, okay? And you've got to advocate for yourself. If you're struggling, if you don't know what to do, you need to talk to the professor. You need to go to the Academic Success Center and do tutoring because they offer it. You're eligible for anything on those campuses. So if the campus offers um, special needs, like if you have an IEP, then you need to take a copy of your IEP to um, special student services so that they know and they can provide you those supports but you have to do that. You can't do it retroactively. So that means you can't start school, start struggling, then submit it and think they're gonna go back and help replace anything that's already been done. It's not the case. So you've gotta do it on the front end. Even if you don't think you're gonna need it, you need to go ahead and submit it. And you wanna advocate for yourself. Again, you just, as the student, when I say advocate for yourself, that means the student is going to do that. And you can see at the top of this, it says the DE student is responsible for these steps because they can't communicate with your parents. They can only communicate with the student. So it's very important that you, you keep that in mind, okay? So that really finishes everything that we need to talk to you about. If you go to the Alatuna website, you will see that we have um, lots of resources there that um, will take you through um, each of the colleges we've linked to them. We've given you a step-by-step -step directions, just like I've done in here, but it's a printable format, so you can check off what you've been doing, what you've done. You can see who's responsible for it. Um, and so, if you have any additional questions, feel free to either email myself or Ms. Rohrbach. Our contact information is also on that dual enrollment section of the Alatuna Counseling page. Have a good day.